Can I ask you, after you've written that heading, just to have a look at everything that we have just done? Okay. What we've been doing is differentiating a variety of different functions, and then we looked at chain rule, we looked at product rule. I didn't make you do question rule, because question rules, I mean, it's just a bit gross, to be honest. So, but you know it, right? You've encountered this before. Okay. However, just having a look at the questions, you've used chain rule, product rule, and quotient rule all on the same kinds of functions. These all share the same kind of DNA. They're all x to the power of something. Yeah, do you see that? So we call this big family, mostly we call them polynomials, right? Their powers, they're pretty easy to, to deal with, okay? But last year we got introduced to these, that's why it was question six here, right? We got introduced to them, but we just kind of stayed on really simple ones. I mean, kind of this guy, right? And we didn't stray very far from that. But I want to do that today and over the next couple of weeks, right? We're going to expand out on the kinds of things that we did with polynomials, we're going to do them with exponentials. And I remember yesterday I asked you this question, like, why should you care? Okay, and I always want to try and answer that question every lesson, and so should you. Even if the teacher doesn't tell you, you should be asking that question. So I want you to write this down, and then you're also going to need your devices for this in a second if you haven't got them out already, so maybe get them out now. We're going to consider a particular exponential function, and hopefully it will remind you of why we care about this. Here's the function. y equals Okay, now, the reason I'm asking you to get your laptops out is because I'd like you to go to Desmos, uh, desmos.com slash calculator, which I'm sure you've, you've, you guys have played a bit with Desmos before. Can you give me a show of hands if you've like, yeah, you've used it, fantastic, thank you for hands down. I want you to go open it, and then this is what I'd like you to plot. Now, just as a, a minor, minor thing which will help you uh, use Desmos more helpfully, if I read this out, right, it is 6 divided by 1, plus e to the power of 5 minus x. Desmos will be happier with you if you try to put a bracket here. It will automatically put one on the end for you, right? Just trying to do you a favor. If you type something else, it'll give you something rather different, okay? Now, some of you will get there before others, and that's fine with me. Eventually, we'll all get there. Once someone gets there, can someone tell me what the significance of this shape is? You would need to have been here yesterday, probably, um, and Hopefully that will give you enough of a clue. Maybe before you even graph it, you'll recognize it. Anyone want to tell me what the significance of this thing is? Have you got the shape? Yeah, go ahead. Fantastic. So this graph here, it's this, uh, it's this weird kind of curvy thing looking here, right? If we typed it right, anyway. It is this thing which closely models what's happening with case numbers for actually any disease, not just COVID, right? This thing has a name. I'd love you to jot it down with me. It is called the logistic model. Now, hopefully you can see that it shares something in common with things you know about, right? It's got this e to the, this kind of an x in there, right? But if I handed this to you, even though this looks very easy to differentiate, uh, where do I even start with this thing? It's a bit of a mess, okay? Now, by the time we're done with this, we'll be able to understand how to differentiate this and how to tease it apart, okay? We're actually going to use the same bag of tricks that you learnt with all of this stuff, right? So, I'm going to give you a simple example that we can do together. So, here comes example one. We're going to differentiate y equals e to the power of x cubed plus 1. Now, I'm not going to call on you to uh, give me an answer aloud, but I just do want to get an indication. Who reckons at this moment they could differentiate this right now? Any takers? Because some might have encountered it. Okay, no problem. That's right. That's why we're teaching you. So, here's what we're going to do. I chose x cubed plus 1 quite deliberately. Do you recognize it? Uh, you did it like 10 minutes ago. Okay. So, this actually shares a lot in common with this question here. This e to the power of stuff, right? This is a function, e to the power of stuff, of a, another function. That's why I highlighted this name before, right? So therefore, I can treat this the same way I treated this. I can use exactly the same technique, okay? To make it a little more obvious, we're going to write a bit of working underneath here to clarify what's going on. So, to give this 
a name, as it were. Okay, I'm going to say let, well I need to choose a name for this, like this is, you know, uh, lost it, f of x or f of t, that's like a name for the function, okay? So I'm going to call it u, uh, in much the same way that we were doing u with, where the product will go? Here, right here, right? So I'm going to say, let's call this thing up here u equals x cubed plus 1. I'm just going to introduce this new letter, which seems like it's making things more complicated, but watch how much simpler it makes things. If u is just going to swap out for this, I can write that y equals e to the power of just u. Is that okay? Like I'm just, it's just a, a quick substitution. So this is e to the power of u. Now, the reason why this is nice is because I already know how to differentiate this. You just, I mean, you don't even have to do anything, right? The only weirdness is the letters are a bit different. I had a dy on dx down here. This is not going to be a dy on dx. There's no x's at all. Instead, it's going to be dy on du. That, that's, the, that's the only other letter to use, right? So du. Oh, that's a bit sneaky. E is kind of masquerading as a letter at the moment. It's really a number, isn't it? Okay. So. We just saw, this is the thing which, when you differentiate it, nothing happens. So its derivative will just be e to the u. That's it, right? That's the thing that we love about differentiating exponentials. They're really good for lazy people, which all mathematicians are. Now, have a look over here, right? This is also something I know how to differentiate, right? Except it's not dy on dx. There's no y here. It's going to be something else on dx. What is that? DU. Fantastic. Nice one, Josh. So this is du on dx. You see why, you remember I told you before, like sometimes we see this, um, this dash notation and it's really good to use. It's very quick. It's, a, it's succinct, but there's a lot that's missing when you just write a dash. You're like, what letters are we talking about here? This thing you've already differentiated today, right? What did you get when you did it before? 3x squared, right? You're like, this is too easy. Is it a trick question? I don't know, okay? So now that you've got all these pieces, I don't know if you can tell that I'm smiling under this, but anyway. Um, now that you've got all these pieces, I can take this jigsaw puzzle and this jigsaw puzzle and jam them together. Watch what happens. When you take these two things together, dy on du, that's the one on the right-hand side, and if you multiply it by du on dx. What do you think will happen? Just look at the fractions, right? Yeah, Josh? The two du's will cancel each other out. Those two guys there? On the numerator, on the denominator, they'll cancel out just like every other fraction you've kind of dealt with, right? So in fact, I'll just put this in dot lines. Because I've got the same thing on this denominator as I have in this numerator, what I get left behind is the thing that I wanted, dy on dx. You see how this works? Okay. That's the thing that I was after in the first place. So let's just put them together, I guess. What did we say dy on du was again? It's on the board. It's on the board. E to the power of u. So I'll just jot that down. What did we work out du on dx was? 3x squared. So I'll just multiply there. And at this point, I'm pretty much finished. The only thing I need to do is we introduced this letter u. Remember that? It's like just, just so that we could make it a bit easier for ourselves. All this red working, we kind of did just to make it a little bit simpler. But the question never had any use in it to begin with, right? So I should probably put it back the way it was. I'll put that u back to being what I defined it to be, x cubed plus 1. So let's write that like so. Uh, e to the power of x cubed plus 1. And then I'm multiplying by 3 x squared. I mean, if you wanted to, you could write it the other way around because products, the order doesn't really matter. Some of you might feel like that's a teeny bit simpler, but they really are the same thing. Does that make sense? Are you content with that? 